question was asked to me a long time ago. To this day, it remains one of the most mesmerizing questions I have heard with regard to modern Koreans and modern Korean culture. A younger girl had just seen a Korean drama and noticed in one of the episodes the Koreans referring to God and they showed the cross and a Western wedding ceremony. Beforehand, she took a history class of Northeast Asia and remembered that the last dynasty was Buddhist. She said a four-word sentence to me that I still think about when I see Koreans go to church now. Why are Koreans Catholic? I couldn't answer her. It was one of the few times in my life I could not answer a historical question that was asked to me. I eventually answered a question with what I had learned, but I still did not feel satisfied. I felt like there was more to it. And the more I learned, the more I actually began to pity the Koreans who were Catholic because of the exact circumstances. I shouldn't say pity. Rather feel sad for what people might do when times get hard enough. Remember that. It's the whole point of the narration and why the modern nation of Korea, an eastern nation, practices a foreign western religion. I'll answer her question again for you to hear. I'll give two reasons. The official reason, the reasons you read in history books, and the unofficial, possibly hidden reason, from which I've heard from older Koreans who were alive during the conversion period and descendants of the original converts. The first reason has to do with how Catholicism and its variations have to do with Northeast Asia or Southeast Asia at all. A key aspect of the religion is to convert as many people as possible all over the world, Asia or elsewhere. It does not matter anywhere in the world. That's it. Just convert. The official reasons has missionaries in Korea and their teachings took hold in the latter part of the dynasty and after independence from Japanese control at the end of the Second World War. Simple. The second reason is more controversial, but realistic. As with religion, it could be seen as a method of escape. Buddhism was the official religion of the Joseon dynasty, but why would so many abandon the faith that they had practiced for over a thousand years, even before the Joseon dynasty? According to the 2005 census, approximately 18% of the population of South Korea consider themselves Protestant and nearly 11% Roman Catholic. Two major groups cover most of the remainder, 23% Buddhist and 47% no religion, hence atheist. Seoul, the capital, has 11 of the world's 12 largest Christian congregations. South Korea sends more foreign missionaries than any other country except the United States of America. And South Korean missionaries are especially well represented in nations hostile to Americans and Europeans. In the year 2000, 10,646 Korean Protestant missionaries served in 156 countries, along with a large number of Catholic missionaries. Korean Christian David Young Gi Cho has attained worldwide prominence as the founder of the colossal Yoido Full Gospel Church, the largest Christian congregation in the world. Korea has more canonized saints than any other country except Italy. Pope John Paul II traveled to Seoul in 1984 to conduct the first canonization ceremony to be held outside of Rome, canonizing 105 saints into the Roman Catholic Church that were of Korean descent. Some have even called the Koreans fanatical when it comes to religion. Why? The situation at the end of the dynasty was dire. The rulers of the dynasty were either incapable of ruling, corrupt, or to make sure that their own social class was taken care of rather than the peasant masses. I have spoke of the situation in Korea towards the end of the Joseon dynasty in other narrations. Be sure to listen to those as well. With these factors in mind, the peasants the people felt like they had no way out of their situation. Speaking with older people who were alive during the final phase of the original conversion, which was just before the Japanese annexation of Korea in 1910, the words of the missionaries and priests had great appeal. Turn to the word of God for salvation. Turn to God for love and acceptance. Belief in Jesus will give you access to an afterlife where all peoples are. They called it heaven. The Koreans called it an escape. Most of the older Koreans I spoke with as a child were not converts because of their parents and grandparents. The first generations to hear the foreign preachers did not put much faith into a foreign religion. The country's problems weren't going to go away just because you were going to another faith. But many more did. The concept of an equal and fair society appealed to many based on achievements and not by the social class your parents or ancestors may be from. Even though Catholicism seriously gained attention toward the late 1800s, signs of the religion in Korea date back to the mid to late 1700s. 
After independence, the religion in Korea began to gain even more hold, especially Protestants and Presbyterianism, mostly in part because of the United States of America, hence the Korean War, because there has been a lot of controversy from that as well. I won't name names, but there has been a fair share of sex, lies, and videotape with relation to the power that the churches have in Korea. Even with all of that, Catholics in Korea is not the majority. Most Koreans are actually atheists, as mentioned before before, although some might perform either Buddhist or Catholic practices or celebrate holidays of those religions just because. I've heard of a few reasons about why modern Koreans are mostly atheist. One reason had Koreans being forced to adopt Japanese Shinto religions during the occupation period and once they declared their independence, they saw no need for religion or wanted to return to Buddhist ways because their belief was shattered after the Japanese colonization. Another reason is that they lost faith. Simple. The corruption of the Joseon dynasty, Japanese occupation, and the country being partitioned. It could destroy anyone's faith, let alone a country's.